Welcome back to Coagulation on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we discussed indirect fibrinolysis, which acts via the protein C pathway. Now this pathway ultimately shifts the balance of fibrin formation and fibrinolysis towards fibrinolysis, but these proteins don't touch fibrin. They just prevent new fibrin from forming. So if you think about it, there's two ways you can, you can get rid of fibrin. Prevent its formation, which is this pathway, and then actually physically degrade the fibrin, which is going to be the pathway we'll discuss in this video, and this is called the plasmin pathway. Okay. So let's go into this pathway. So I have a protein that's going to be circulating in the blood. It's called plasminogen. And the indigen at the end is going to tell you that it's an inactive protein and has to be activated to plasmin uh, to perform its function. Now, as we've talked about, we've got supposedly uh, fibrin threads that have prevented uh, prevented uh, further blood loss at the tissue at the site of tissue injury, but also in places where we have healthy blood vessels like here on the, on the left side, here over on the right, we don't want fibrin clots to be forming there. And so in those areas, we may have activated plasmin. So we have what are called plasminogen activators. So these are, these are factors that we find in the blood for the most part that are going to activate plasminogen into plasmin. Um, we have here tissue plasminogen activator. This UPA is sometimes called urokinase but it's a urokinase type plasminogen activator. It's gonna perform a similar function as TPA, tissue plasminogen activator. And then if we have too much uh, Hageman factor or factor 12A built up or factor 11A built up, these can actually start shifting the balance um, towards fibrinolysis by activating plasminogen into plasmin. And the purpose of these two proteins doing it, because these are clotting factor uh, enzymes in the intrinsic pathway, remember, the logic behind these proteins being able to activate plasminogen is they're sort of, even though they're starting the intrinsic pathway, they're a way to prevent the pathway from getting out of hand. Okay, And so these are going to be able to activate plasminogen into plasmin. Now, plasmin itself is a serine protease, and it is capable of hydrolyzing fibrin. Now, plasmin's exact function is going to depend on whether or not it's acting on already cross-linked fibrin or non-cross-linked fibrin, and it can also do the same thing to fibrinogen. I've sort of color-coded the reaction arrows here so you can figure out what's happened. And also, this uh, diagram down here kind of shows you what's going on. Let's consider the first case of cross-linked fibrin. This is actually what we see here. This fibrin, the spider web type material, has already been cross-linked. So if we want to degrade that away, that's this purple arrow, it's, the plasmin is going to degrade those into what we call D-dimers. And that's what this bottom thing is right here. We've got cross-linked fibrin, which is formed from fibrinogen by the action of thrombin. See the previous videos for that. But you see here what plasmin is going to be able to do is it clips these in certain parts. Okay, uh, These little red proteins that are sticking off the ends, they get hydrolyzed off. They're sort of separate minor degradation products. But ultimately, plasmin is going to cut uh, these proteins in a specific way to where we get these products called D-dimers. Okay, And D-dimers are the main, uh, you could say, uh, fibrin degradation products when we start with cross-linked fibrin. Okay, those would degrade it further. If we start with non-cross-linked fibrin or fibrinogen, we're going to kind of follow this top pathway up here. And initially what's going to happen is these little red uh, pieces, these proteins, are going to get clipped off by plasmin, and it's going to generate something called fragment X. Fragment X can further be degraded by plasmin. We can actually hydrolyze off with plasmin one of these D domains. In fact, it's just called D domain when it gets hydrolyzed off. This other piece, uh, is actually called fragment Y. Now, the D domain is a separate identifiable fibrinolysis product. Uh, the Y fragment, on the other hand, gets degraded further. Uh, a little bit more of these red pieces get hydrolyzed off, but the fragment Y, um, after you hydrolyze off those little pieces, we see here the E domain. Okay, So when fragment Y loses those little ears up there, so to speak, it becomes the E domain. And all of those, the D, the Y, the E domain, and then the D dimers from uh, the destruction of cross-linked fibrin in the first case, 
all of those are eventually going to become completely proteolized and recycled to amino acids. They're not going to just stay there. Okay, um, They're going to be completely degraded away. But all of these, the D-dimers, the D-domain, Y-domain, E-domain, these are called fibrinolysis products okay? Uh, because they're the products of fibrinolysis. And if you break this word down, it literally means the destruction or the cleavage or breakage, lysis of fibrin. Okay, and actually, if you want to completely uh, cover coagulation, you do have to discuss fibrinolysis, which in some ways you can think of the regulation of uh, coagulation because you don't want this blood clot or fibrin clot remaining there forever. Eventually, it's going to have to be degraded away. And actually, if under normal circumstances in a healthy individual, if you cut yourself, you coagulate, the clotting factors get activated, and you get this fibrin clot, but eventually these endothelial cells are going to heal, and this fibrin clot is going to be degraded away. You don't want it to detach because then it could go into a blood vessel and occlude it, so plasmin and all of these fibrinolysis pathways are going to come and completely degrade that fibrin clot so that you maintain your cardiovascular health. So, hopefully this video made sense. Uh, make sure you go back and watch the video on indirect fibrinolysis via the protein C pathway. And hopefully you learned something on this in terms of the activation of plasminogen into plasmin. And we see that fibrin and fibrinogen are going to get destroyed. And this is a way that you regulate fibrin formation. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.